everybody and welcome to let's look at march of the eagles the new grand strategy game from paradox of course the publisher probably most famous for grand strategy games i guess games like europa universalis 3 hearts of iron uh crusader kings 2 i guess perhaps most famously at least most recently but this is their new one and we were actually introduced to this at PDXCon back uh, at the end of January, and as someone who's never played a grand strategy game before, March of the Eagles seemed like a title that was definitely for me, because it was built by uh, Chris King, who is the lead game designer, as kind of like a grand strategy introduction for people who have never played this genre before, but might be interested, and that absolutely described me, and I'm hopefully... Uh, it hopefully describes some of you as well because I've actually you know I've spent about four hours with this game in the 24 hours that I've had it I am really enjoying it so far despite the fact that some of the concepts are still a little bit foreign to me and I still sort of feel like I'm figuring out how to play this game I've had a really good time with it so far let's just start up single player here uh, and we'll explain exactly what the fuck March of the Eagles is because this is obviously kind of a, a different game than you might be used to seeing on the channel in any case Basically, March of the Eagles is a uh, historical grand strategy game that takes place between the years of 1805 and 1820, and it's kind of like a historical sandbox in the sense that uh, we can play as any of these European powers, or, you know, North African powers, or, you know, some Asian powers, I guess, over here uh, in Persia and the Ottomans, but uh, we, like, there's an official timeline, obviously, for what happens. 1805 to 1820 is the Napoleonic Wars and the wars between uh, Great Britain and France, but, uh, we don't have to stick to that if we don't want to. So our goal is basically, I mean, there are victory conditions, but our main goal is just to accomplish whatever goals we really see fit. I think this is actually the game that I was playing earlier, because, uh, as I was playing as France, I did manage to branch out here a little bit and take over a good deal of Prussia. Actually, this might be the starting map. In any case, it's not all that important for right now. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the Grand Campaign, which is the, the very earliest starting time. And it only runs for 15 years, which is actually quite a long time. Uh, a full game, I've heard, can take as much as 7 hours, maybe average 7 hours, so not as much as. Uh, and there's all these starting countries down here which we can choose to play as. So we can choose to play as France, which, as you can see, is a very easy game to play, uh, because France is obviously, you know, at this point in history is a, a real power, especially when it comes to land dominance in their, like, standing army. We can also play as Great Britain, which has a little bit more of a difficult time. It's at war with a lot of countries, but it also has, a uh, naval superiority, and part of it, the victory conditions for this game are having both land and naval superiority. We could also play as Russia. Obviously, they have, uh, a lot of land superiority as well, and they're not really at war with anybody except Persia right now. Uh, these are basically just the major powers, like Spain, Austria, Prussia, uh, the Ottomans, and Sweden. So these are the countries which, as it says, have a chance to win on their own. So there are countries you can play as here, I promise I'm going to get into the gameplay any second now. Uh, but these are countries that uh, can actually win the game on their own if you play really well. A lot of these other countries, like if we played as Portugal, for example, difficulty is huge, and we probably don't have a chance to actually win the game on its own. So this is not, you know, this ain't your daddy's 4X game where you can play as whatever country you want and everyone starts on equal footing. Countries exist as they did in uh, the real historical timeline, so they have different advantages and disadvantages that are true to uh, official canon. Anyway, we're going to play as France. We're probably going to have a pretty substantial loading screen to start things off here, but the reason I'm playing as France is that France seems like a very good uh, kind of early... If you're new to grand strategy games and you're new to this game in general, France seems like a good country to start as because they have a lot of advantages. So let's just back out a little bit here. Let's take a look at our interface. So this is the map that we will be dealing with for the entire game. It probably looks pretty familiar with you, to you uh, if you're familiar with uh, other Paradox strategy games. Now, the interface, you know, there's a lot of things to talk about here, so I'm not going to go too much into detail with things right off the bat. I'll probably talk about things as is necessary. But let's just talk about a few important things right now. Uh, this is our... Ducats? I always re it was in Jamestown too. Ducats? Anyway, this is our gold, uh, and we can spend our gold on things like making ships and uh, raising armies. France already has a huge standing army, which is spread out, you know, throughout the, the borders here. Let's change our map so we can see the borders a little bit more effectively. So France is all this purple stuff right here. That was the default uh, starting map, I believe. So, um, yeah, we have a lot of units here. We have uh, some units down here on our west coast. Uh, we probably have some, yeah, a lot down here in the uh, kind of Italy region, getting closer to the Mediterranean, uh, because this is gonna be hotly contested, because Sicily is actually an enemy of us to a certain extent, or will be a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, I was talking about our money a second ago, so why don't we just use our money to do something like create a ship? So we can go to St. Lo here, which is a port city, uh, and we can build the ship, and let's build a first-rate ship of the line squadron, which is gonna be uh, very expensive. It's gonna cost 170, which is, you know, about a quarter of our uh, total production here, or total, uh, horde here. It's gonna take 243 days to produce this, so that's pretty substantial, but I'm gonna work on producing 
uh, a good navy here because I want to have something to rival the British if possible. This might be a terrible idea because I feel like uh, the British are still much, much stronger than us. But by creating this fleet, uh, at least I'll have a chance to kind of keep my ports from being blocked, which is important. Uh, we do have some ships here. I'm just going to move these over here, actually. So I should have explained before we even got into this that this is a real-time strategy game, believe it or not, but it is also pausable. So if I just uh, hit the space bar, I can unpause the game and time will start moving forwards very, very slowly. But uh, otherwise, you can pause it and issue a number of actions at once. And there is multiplayer in this as well. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make things very simple here. Uh, and I'm going to merge a bunch of armies. So let's take uh, all of these armies here that are basically on the either our you know northwestern coast or just northern coast. Uh, in the border with Denmark, and I'm going to merge these together. So first things first, I'm just going to have them all move into this area here. I'm going to speed up time a little bit and have them walk over here. This is just to simplify things for me. Probably a very bad decision from a tactical standpoint. Great Britain has formed a coalition against us. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and we have apparently fought in a battle here. Uh, yes, it's going to be a naval battle. We'll probably fight in several naval battles uh, just as we get started here. Maybe we should, we should pursue the British uh, in the English Channel here just to kind of have a chance at naval dominance that's my hope anyway anyway our guys are going to slowly move uh in here and once they all end up on the same area which is fairly close now uh we can just merge them and create basically one huge like 150 dude fighting force you can actually speed things up just a little bit here if these guys would ever make it over that would be awesome again this is probably a terrible decision from a tactical standpoint but for simplification's sake it seems to make sense to me. All right, so now we have one huge standing army of 190,000 men. Let's start using this to actually conquer somebody. This is probably a good time to bring up the uh, diplomacy screen, which is right here. So this represents or demonstrates our diplomacy along with absolutely every other country in the game right now. So we're France. Obviously, uh, we want to be taking a look at relation here, which is uh, how their opinion of us and our opinion of them. So if you look at a country like uh, Great Britain, obviously we have minus 199 relation, which as far as I know is basically as bad as it can possibly be. So if we bring up Great Britain, we can do a number of things. Uh, well, right now we actually can't do very much except sue for peace because we're at war. Uh, but we can sue for peace and 0% uh, war score means we're basically even right now. We could offer a white peace, but they would not accept this offer, so there's no point. Uh, we could give them some provinces, give them some money, and maybe they'd accept peace, and that would allow us to fight like a land war in Europe without worrying about this kind of, you know, monkey on our back over here. But instead, we're just going to keep things as they basically are in the official timeline, I would guess, even though I don't know too much about the history of this period. Um, but, you know, we might want to take a look at a country like... What country do we want to attack right now? This is like an easy war. Uh, we probably don't want to fight Spain. That's going to be a pain in the ass. We could, however, almost assuredly conquer Portugal uh, if I was to move my troops into Spain. So first things first, let's just look at Spain, make sure we have a good relationship with them. Minus 49, that's not very good. So in order to attack Portugal, by the way, I'm doing this this way because I previously expanded eastwards in my, my last game. And I took over like Saxony, I had a very long war against Prussia. Uh, and like NASA, I took off a, or I took over a lot of these areas and expanded France to the uh, the east. But then r I started butting up against Russia, and they started fighting me, and that was no good for anybody. So uh, I'm gonna try to take over Portugal this time, and I'm gonna increase my relationship with Spain. So first things first, every action that we take requires a diplomat, and we only get one diplomat per month. Uh, although we do have an idea, I'll talk about that in a second. But um, what I'm going to do is uh, ask for military access to Spain. This will cost us one diplomat. And then we'll let time go forward a little bit, and they'll accept, and that means we should be able to move into this area here. Obviously, our relationship with Portugal is pretty bad. So we're going to send that. As you can see, that cost us one diplomat. This is a very good time to talk about ideas, but before I do that, uh, let's take our huge fighting force here of 190,000 men. Probably the combined strength, this is like 90% of the uh, French army, so this is a terrible decision in all likelihood from a, a national defense standpoint, but that's okay, because uh, I really want to take over Portugal. I want it now. Now, uh, if I go to ideas, ideas is kind of like the tech tree that we have in this game. Again, since we're starting as the French, we have a lot of ideas already unlocked. There are at least like seven, maybe five or six ideas already unlocked. Uh, but when you start as a country like Spain, which is what I played in my very, very first game that didn't go so well for me, uh, I ended up starting with zero. So it, it all depends. Like, again, there's accurate start points. You know, the French are a little bit more advanced compared to some other civilizations at this point in the game. So all these ideas... Uh, uh, convey a certain bonus like we can have an increase to our army march speed uh, decrease to the amount of interest when we take a loan out from the bank 
Uh, but I really want to get the one that gives us one extra diplomat per month, which is uh, diplomatic course. So we're going to get that. So now we'll have the option. Uh, diplomats are really important. 69 war attrition. Diplomats are really important uh, because they allow us to uh, basically do anything in not involving actual combat in this game. Combat is, as I've been told, uh, much, much heavier emphasized or more heavily emphasized in this game as compared to earlier Paradox Grand Strategy games. The, the countries are basically set in starting conditions that encourage war. So let's first off move our army over here while we are waiting for Spain, which has, I believe Spain has... Um, accepted our offer we're just waiting for our uh, alliance or sorry for our army to move in a little bit here we did fight a little bit i don't worry too much about naval battles uh when i start to worry is when the enemy starts assigning or starts actually trying to land troops in france the enemy of course meaning great britain as almost always okay so our uh, 190 strong force has made it into spain i didn't see what they said but i believe they gave us military access right yeah they did give us military access all right so we're also, you know, another thing I might want to do is just increase my relationship with Spain. So let's uh, increase our relation. It'll cost us 10 prestige, which is, uh, we have 399 prestige right now. Uh, but by increasing our relationship with them, they'll be more likely to help us out in the future. But per perhaps in a war, uh, if this Portuguese war goes badly, they can help us. Or if, um, you know, I need them to help me invade in the east, or I need them to help me, maybe they can provide the navy for our, our raids on Great Britain eventually. Uh, etc, etc. But in any case, um, sure, I'm going to send a diplomat to increase my relationship with Spain. Uh, and then I'm going to move my troops right here uh, inside of the Spanish borders. And this is going to take a while again for uh, things to move. So I'm just going to uh, speed things up as fast as they can go. And we're skipping over a lot of this flavor text. But of course, it's not all flavor text. A lot of it is important developments uh, throughout the uh, empire or throughout the, the game board, I should say, throughout Europe. Now, we are about to invade Portugal here. By the way, the reason I'm playing as France and not Britain is because I absolutely suck at using the Navy in every strategy game. So this seemed like a much more simple way for me to do things. First thing I'm going to do is um, maybe split up our fighting force a little bit. So we have a huge... Oh, I've merged them, so I guess I can't split it up. Whatever. We're going we're gonna to steamroll the country very, very slowly with a single fighting force then. Uh, so with our 186,000 men, I think we lost some men to attrition or starvation or something as we moved along... Uh, there is a supply line mechanic in the game that I don't really understand right now. I just want to kill, man. So, we have four diplomats. We're going to go down to Portugal here. We're going to declare war on Portugal. Like so. Again, this costs us a, a diplomat. It says they're guaranteed by Spain, but I don't think Spain will attack us because we are dealing with... Uh, we're, we're hanging out with Spain right now. So, um, we're going to send this in. I don't think Spain is actually going to uh, attack us. So having uh, now uh, done that, we're just going to start invading these cities and slow things down just a little bit here. Three is a good speed, I think. One is super slow. Uh, five is way too fast. Spain have honored their military alliance with Portugal. Spain, you very much were not supposed to do that. And now I see a lot of Spanish troops over here at our Spanish border. I wonder if I could use a diplomat and like sue for peace with Spain. Uh... I just offer them a white piece. They would not accept this offer. What if I offer them some tribute in the form of, um, you know, conceding defeat? No. In the form of uh, annulling my treaty with Bavaria? <laughs> I don't know. Let's, if I annul all these treaties, they would not accept these offers. Are you kidding me, Spain? Come on, man. I'm setting up a great relationship here. Uh, I could give them some prov- oh, I can't give them some provinces, actually. Alright, I guess Spain uh, is deciding that they want to uh, go to war with me. So I guess I will actually be fighting Spain here, which is kind of surprising to me. I really did not want it to happen, but uh, unfortunately, that's how it's going to be. So I guess we're not going to worry too much about Portugal. Instead... Perhaps we just want to steamroll Spain instead. Uh, they're going to be a much harder force to fight, obviously. One thing we should absolutely do, we're probably going to lose some of these border towns, but I should start raising armies. So I'm going to go to my military screen. That's victory conditions. I'll talk about those eventually, I promise. Uh, we're going to go to our uh, military screen, and I'm going to start creating a bunch of, say, el elite infantry brigades. So we're going to select all affordable, which means we're going to get uh, a new military brigade of like 2,000 men in several cities. Uh, and we should set a rally point, actually, but I don't know how to do that. 
So we'll build selected like that, and maybe we'll create some uh, artillery brigades as well. Select affordable. We're spending a lot of ducats here. Maybe a dragoon brigade. Select affordable. Oh, we can't actually create any of those. I think we're almost at a... Ah, that's it. We are. We're almost at a manpower. So next month, this indicates how many men we can actually raise uh, right now. And we gain about 10,000 per month. Anyway, uh, so we have 180,000 troops. I, I don't like you, Spain. And I wish I wasn't fighting you and Portugal at exactly the same time. But so be it. Let us, uh, instead of going to Almeida, we'll go to Grand Rodrigo, my favorite uh, Clint Eastwood movie. And now that we've unpaused the game, we'll slowly move in there. And we'll probably have some major battles be fought here. Maybe we should go to speed 4 instead of speed 3. Speed 3 seems a little bit slow for my taste. Okay, Piedmont is now at war with us as well. It, things that, you know, the alliances start to break up pretty quickly. So with 180,000 men, you know, I, I really want to intercept this Spanish fighting force over here. That's going to have 110,000 men very shortly. Uh, we should probably send... A lot of our troops. This is like 19,000, which is not really that many. Um, let's send, uh, you know, those troops over here. And we'll send all of our Italian troops over here as well. To at least give us a chance to slow these guys down. Uh, while I take over their country. And put myself in a position where I can actually sue for peace. So, now that we're here. Um, what we might want to do with all these men. Is siege Ciudad Rodrigo. I guess it's not Grand Rodrigo. Ciudad Rodrigo. And by assaulting it, uh, they have a lot of men, 10,000. That's that's a very substantial uh, siege force that is going to cause a, a huge loss of units for me. Uh, so we're going to do it, though, because why not do it now? Uh, and you're going to see my men tick down pretty quickly, probably, while theirs tick down fairly slowly. Who wants peace now? Brunswick wants peace. France will concede defeat. Brunswick gains 50 prestige as the attacker. No, thank you. I didn't even know I was at war with you. So they're tearing through me pretty well here, but eventually... Uh, you know, they will seed in all likelihood. I've lost like 40,000 men. They've lost like 1,000. This is not good for me. Uh, but hopefully the battle ends sometime soon because I'm kind of realizing I'm fighting an incredibly losing battle here. It's not merely like man versus man. Like there is, you know, army composition plays a s serious role as well. This was probably a terrible decision. Oh my god. Get out of there, guys. The siege is over. Run! Okay. Are they getting away? I don't think so. Instead, I've lost 100,000 dudes. And I've killed like 2,000. This has actually been the worst siege I've ever had in my entire life. The Spanish are going to absolutely destroy me now. But if I take over the city, that's all that matters, man. Okay, so we did. Yeah, we lost 117,000 men. Beautiful. That was probably like a quarter of our entire fighting force. But we did manage to take over... The fortress, <clears throat> pardon me and my sick voice again. So, you know, there is that. Uh, I'm not happy about that, obviously. And there is a huge Spanish fighting force that is now pushing into my country. So what we're going to do, I've mismanaged this incredibly. We're going to open up the Netherlands here, which is a good ally of ours. Uh, and we're going to request an expeditionary force um, of the Walkerin camp. Sure, why not? We'll send that over. That's obviously going to cost us a diplomat. And then we're just going to send our uh, 60,000 troops. Which was previously like 180,000. Uh, and we're going to have them first off reconvene like here. Uh, and we did get an expeditionary force. I don't know where it came from. Where is my expeditionary force? Maybe I can find that in the military mode. Maybe not. Um, one second. We're probably going to have some battles here in a second. I can see the Spanish getting closer. The dirty dogs. I have mismanaged this drastically. Believe it or not, this went worse than my, like, blind first playthrough. Now, the Portuguese... All I wanted to do was fight Portugal, man. This is why I should have expanded in the east instead. Uh, you get down here. We want to have a, a nice fighting force here. And we, we can still win this war. I mean, that was a really mismanaged battle. Uh, but we, we can still win this. There's no question about that. The one thing I am going to do is focus my efforts on the... Uh... Oh, wow. How did I get so many units in here all of a sudden? I like it. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. Uh, but I want to focus my attacks on the uh, actual western border as opposed to the uh, you know the Portuguese border here. I was just doing that to demonstrate a siege. Um, it was a terrible idea. Anyway, let's start fighting in here. We'll, we'll set up for a battle uh, and we'll start trying to push the Spanish out. And then maybe we can make some gains on uh, the east eastern Spanish western France border. As you can see, we're now winning armies or winning battles like crazy. Those battle screens, I mean, I should probably stick it, stick on those a little bit longer to explain 
what the heck is actually going on. With 50,000 men. I want to go down here because I think this area is about to be sieged. And I don't want to lose this territory. Uh, but we'll wait till you see another battle screen and I'll pause the game and explain what the heck is going on. With respect to the interface there. Okay, so we're on Bilbao here. They have uh, 8,000 men. So I really don't want to siege this. Because uh, it's going to be a pain in the ass. I, I want to fight these guys actually. We're just going to hold out in... How much does San Sebastian have? Let's, let's go to San Sebastian first. Um... And what's going on over here? We're gonna get ready to fight in uh, Parpignan as well. Pignan, probably. So here's a battle. Uh, the Ottomans have shown us that the Great Britons cannot be trusted. That's true. Uh, and we'll get into a fight here. And then the battle's about to end. Okay, victory! Now, when we look at the victory screen, there is flavor text down here. This just tells us how the battle went on. Uh, a lot of it sometimes is just like nothing interesting happened. But sometimes it's like... Uh, it, it tells you about the individual players, like Duke de Infantado ordered a cavalry charge on the Spanish left flank, etc, etc. You can read all this if you're interested. Uh, but on the battle screen, the most important thing for me is, you know, starting units, which is 128,000 for us, and 47,000 for him, and then units that you lost. So we lost 10,000, he lost 20,000. That's a pretty decisive victory. Some of our units are getting a little bit stronger now, and every time you have a battle, by the way, uh, that gives you idea points. You need 200 points to get a new idea. Uh, but the interesting thing is that you actually gain more battle points when you lose battles than you do when you win. So it's not a situation... This is a fairly uh, weak fortress here, so let's assault this. Um, so it, it's a situation where you're actually... Like, losing is somewhat incentivized, or at the very least, we've uh, won this battle again. Uh, handily, 150 losses to 7,000. Uh, but... Uh, losing, actually, it's not like when you win, you get more and more knowledge and then spiral out of control. It's more when you lose, there's kind of a balancing factor or a pendulum that swings in the other direction to maybe make, you know, the next time a little bit better. So we've taken over a little bit of, uh, Spanish territory here. I should talk about victory conditions. I haven't really, I've been kind of setting my own goals in the game so far, which is definitely a, a valid way to play. But there are victory conditions, so if I load up, uh, this right here. Basically, you have to get, uh, as far as I remember, you have to get land dominance as well as naval dominance in order to win the game. And the game ends in 1820 if neither of those are achieved, I think. I'm not sure how... There's probably a point system, basically, if it ends in 1820 and no one's gotten this. So right now, um, Great Britain's in first, France is in second. I've actually lost a lot of prestige. Usually you start with 90 as France, so I've already lost a, a decent deal. Uh, this is obviously a relative scale, so Great Britain's doing very well. Now we also have... If I load up my, um, is, I think it's dominance map mode. But look at my dominance map mode here. Uh, we can see some of these territories are outlined in green. Some of them are in dark green. Some of them are in blue. Basically, uh, we have to conquer as many of these green areas as is possible in order to achieve uh, land dominance. So by conquering, I mean, a lot of these are the light green ones we already have. Or they're satellites of ours. Like, we, we technically have Zurich and Switzerland because Switzerland is basically just like a tributary of France at this point. Same with uh, the papacy down here. But, you know, there's a big uh, province here in Prussia, uh, in Warsaw. So, uh, if I wanted to get that one, that would give me increased land dominance. I already have 100% land dominance, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, but this is how you would achieve land dominance and eventually get that victory condition satisfied in the game. Additionally, these blue ones uh, represent naval dominance, I believe, as they are calling it. Yes, naval dominance. Um, so as we, uh, you know, take over these ports, uh, there's one over here in Egypt as well, in Alexandria, um, and one in Spain at Barcelona, one in Great Britain in uh, Dublin, and uh, Stockholm as well. Uh, so by conquering three of those, I believe we achieve naval dominance. Obviously, this one's going to be easy enough, the other ones are going to be trickier. But again, I've been playing it basically as a, uh, a sandbox so far, just kind of trying to set my own goals and, and have fun with the game while I'm playing. So... Let's continue doing that, shall we? I'm not sure how long we're going to play this. We're only about five months into the game. And remember, there are 15 years. So these games are very long. Uh, especially if you'd like to sit around and, uh, you know, think about your ideas. So we, we won another battle here. We lost one unit and they lost 15,000, which is pretty substantial, obviously. This fighting force has basically been decimated. Uh, we're just gonna move back into French territory here to try to push out the Spanish, and then we'll we'll make a, a few more bold moves into their territory. I would like to take over Barcelona. Let's set that as our overall goal. Wow, that was another huge battle there. Uh, let's set that as our overall goal uh, for this video. We're gonna try to take over Barcelona uh, and achieve a certain amount of naval dominance. We got another victory there, and I, I've been doing this a lot with the French, just steamrolling, uh, basically like take a huge army, match it up against a slightly smaller army, and uh, you know watch the fun happen essentially. 
uh, which seems to have worked out very well for me so far. Uh, in terms of, you know, as you can see with these losses, you know, we're losing less than 500. They're losing 17,000, and we already have a manpower advantage, so this is good for me. So again, let's try uh, to make a move now that we have all these people into Barcelona. We'll, have to, we'll take Genoa first, or is that uh, Girona? My apologies. Uh, and we'll start moving over these mountains, although actually we should move this force. We've got two very large fighting forces here. Let's move this one over the mountains here uh, and hopefully decimate the uh, Spanish before they come after us. Brunswick offers the same offer again, which we will decline. Diplomacy plays a big role. There's no question about that. What is Girona's fortress? I can't really see how many units they have. In uh, 6,000 and we have 100,000. I mean, wait, I want to take it. Let's put it that way. Um, let's assault this here. I imagine it's not going to go substantially well. We'll probably lose a lot of men in the process here. 6,000 is a fairly strong, uh, or a fairly uh, hardy kind of siege defense. But that's okay. As long as we eventually get it. They'll give up eventually. We'll own this, and then we'll push into Barcelona. And then perhaps at that point we can sue for peace. Uh, just extend our borders a little bit, and then focus on the eastern front, perhaps. Or, you know, focus on fighting Britain if we want to. So again, uh, we basically overran their army. This doesn't mean that we murdered everybody. It just means that uh, we we completely overran them. So they just uh, scattered and ran away. And we're just going to keep moving in this way just to ensure... Oh, I didn't want to do that. You can stay here. Oh, no. You, wanna, you come this way. Uh, this is just to ensure that they don't push back here. Uh, and maybe then we can sue for peace or we can go to war with Portugal if we so choose. All right. So we've, we've taken over Girona. We lost 26,000 men, which is a lot. I'm not very good at sieging in general. Now, I, we're going to move into Barcelona. You can also just win sieges uh, by starving enemies out, basically, just by occupying their territory and refusing to let any uh, supplies come in, which might be what we do in Barcelona here, because there is uh, probably... Uh, you know, it's 2,000 men, 2,000 artillery. That doesn't seem impossible for 94,000 men. So let's do an assault here. Uh, and if we take over Barcelona, then maybe we'll sue for peace, because our war score is probably going to be very good. So we're going to start this assault here. How is the French force over here doing? Taking a long time to get over those mountains. Not unexpected, I guess. Uh, we were defeated in the Battle of Bayonne, which is here. How many men did I start with? 7,000? I guess they've pushed in uh, over here, but that's okay. I don't think they're going to continue with it. Gradual losses or occasional losses, fine by me. Oh, we have totally surrendered in Bayonne, which means we should actually transition our army over here instead and they might actually be able to siege Bayonne before I can uh, get in there um, oh yeah we won the Battle of Barcelona okay I thought we lost uh, Bayonne there now it's up to us at this point if we want to push further and further into uh, the Spanish territory if I just went to our relationship with Spain right now I can sue for peace and see our war score so we've won a victory which means they would accept a white peace for sure which is just like a good-natured piece like let's just stop fighting uh, or we could probably uh, sue them for some some territory or maybe uh, a few ducats or ducats uh, but I'm not gonna do that yet I want to push it a little bit further I'd like to get my total or my war score up to total war uh, so then I can actually annex some of this uh, Spanish territory and then maybe sue for peace and then go to battle against Portugal for now we've got this huge fighting force here they're gonna fight back in Bayon their army basically just gave up I guess so we're going to continue to pursue them down here, and we're just going to make some more progress here, you know? We're going to push into Igualadala. Uh, we won the Battle of Bayonne again. They just gave up, I guess, and they're starting to retreat here. So I'm going to try to take uh, a few more ports here. I, I probably won't be able to take over the entirety of Spain, but I can reduce them to, uh, you know, merely a, a, a minor regional power as opposed to somebody playing on the major stage. We haven't really made that much... Uh, progress into the country as you can see but that's okay uh, I want to show off a little bit more of the gameplay but really this is how I've been spending the bulk of my time so far Russia has offered us a peace offer I'm gonna decline it for now just because there's no Russian uh, forces near me right now which means that I'm not too worried about a you know a, a Russian strike force hitting me or anything like that uh, yeah, I'm just gonna fight the battle in here we're now in uh, Tara I apologize. Tarragona, for the fact that I'm totally culturally ignorant here. Uh, we'll get all this off the screen, and then we'll assault. They have a lot of men, but uh, we should still be able to do fairly well here. We'll win this battle almost assuredly. We lost 3,000. They lost uh, more than 3,000, which is all that matters. 
And now, why don't we take our troops and head down towards uh, more of these cities. The more of these cities we conquer, the higher our war score gets. The higher our war score gets, the more we can reasonably demand and accept to have acquiesce to in our uh, peace offerings. Qu quote unquote peace offerings, anyway. Uh, so apparently we've lost Bremen in the east here. Uh, the British, I guess, are starting to invade into our, uh, our eastern front, which is a little bit scary for me because I have taken our entire force uh, from the Netherlands here. Uh, that worries me a little bit. We should probably start raising some brigades again. Uh, we already raised... You know what? We can probably get away with just taking these guys. Frame rate's getting a little wonky right now. I'm not sure what's up with that. I mean, it is a big game uh, in terms of like what you're looking at, the amount of units on the screen at the same time, but it's only 500 megabytes, which is kind of crazy to me. Uh, let's uh, wait for these guys to get here, and then we'll siege Bilbo Baggins. Uh, and we're, again, slowly expanding our influence into Spanish territory here. Which is good for everybody. Uh, the Spanish are back in Barcelona, which obviously I don't want to have happen. So let's very briefly uh, take a trip up there. What I want to get at here is that this is very much a shallow uh, look at this game. But it's impossible in, in like a, a half hour, 45 minutes. I, mean, I don't even know how long I've been playing so far. The time just vaporizes. It's like that Civ one more turn element. Oh, come on, mom. Just one more turn. Only there's no turns. So it kind of just proceeds ad infinitum which I, I really like anyway we're gonna let's go for uh Santander here and maybe we'll push down into uh Zaragoza and by taking over these cities we'll probably be able to extend our territory a little bit we're fighting in Barcelona again they should have no chance yeah their army is basically decimated uh we'll continue moving over this way and yes, we'll move into Santander as well. And then we should be able to sue for peace, and I'll explain a little bit more of, you know, some of the other mechanics of this game. But mostly, what I want to get at is this this is a game with um, very much a sandbox kind of like a historical element. Uh, it's not like a Civ game where you're trying to win like a cultural victory or a military victory necessarily. It's more like, uh, you know, just kind of make your own goals. And, and it's going to appeal to a different kind of person. I, I feel like at this point, you probably know if you're into Paradox Grand Strategy games. But it's worth noting, this actually is a... A good jumping off point. This is my first grand strategy game, uh, and I'm enjoying it a great deal so far. And it hasn't been that hard to get into. There's a, there's a very good tutorial uh, that kind of takes you up to speed. And it basically says, like, you know what? You're not going to get everything right away. Just get the basics and then, uh, you know, work from there. Learn on the job, basically. Which, which I can appreciate in a game like this to a certain extent. We're probably going to win this siege here. And uh, then we can sue for peace with the Spanish. Who's peace offer from Piedmont? Um... You know what? I'll, I'll accept that because I don't want to deal with them. They're they're uh, attacking us in the Italian peninsula area. We've won the Battle of Santander. We're, we're probably about to win uh, this last battle here. Oh, that's fine. Um, this last battle here in uh, Tarragona. No, it's not Tarragona. I don't even know where we are. Lerida. Lerida. I don't know, man. I'm North American. Hamburger, hamburger, cheeseburger. NFL football, I'm actually Canadian. Not that that is, a, you know, what all Americans sound like. I'm just, oh, I'm digging myself a deeper hole. Anyway, after our pretty much colossal defeat against the Spanish at the very beginning of this, we have now turned things around. We zoom out. You know, I've taken a pretty nice chunk of Spanish terrain there. I'm probably not going to be able to hold all of that. We can annex countries, but in order to annex them, two things have to exist. Annex meaning basically just turn it into France. Um, the entire thing. We would need to take over all of the cities, which is going to be very difficult for us. Uh, additionally, we would need to, uh, the city would, or the, the country would need to have less than 50 provinces. I don't know how many Spain has. It's got to be close. I ran into that when I was fighting Prussia. So Prussia has over 50. Spain, you know, maybe a similar size. Uh, we could at least take some territory and then maybe try to annex it later. So let's sue for peace now. Uh, see what our relationship is here. We've got a 56 war score. Um, let's, I, the thing is, I want to keep fighting because the higher our war score gets, the easier it is to demand more and more territory. So it might be worthwhile. What if we actually, like, move our forces in here? This is going to be a big deal if we succeed. Uh, and we're going to just have a, a reconvening here in Soria. And then I'm going to try to take out Madrid, actually. That's going to be my overall goal for the end of this video. Probably the end of this video, in any case. We're going to take 100 and... Oh, where are these guys going? This worries me. Oh, they're trying to push back a little bit. Let's just fight them off. 30,000, it's nothing to sneeze at, but it is fairly substantial. Uh, you do, you know, you, you sometimes get distracted from your goals in this game. You gotta deal with what the enemy is doing at the same time. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna rout them, basically. They lost 19,000 men and are no longer really that worrying for me. 
So now let's start uh, moving down here towards Madrid. And if we take over Madrid, our war score, you know, it is their capital, so our war score should be substantially higher. Are these guys seriously just going to hang out in this area? Fine, well, I'll fight you again then. I don't necessarily want to do it, but I kind of feel like I've got it to wipe you out. I was hoping you would just go back to the capital or something. Uh, we lost the Battle of Bilbao, but that's okay, because we're just going to route their enemy troops this time on pause the game. Sometimes I, I'm like, why is everything moving so slow? And then I realize that I've had the game paused. So, with only like 3,000 troops, uh, that army is basically done, I would say. Now, let's take our entire fighting force here and start moving it towards Madrid. If we take over Madrid... No, the army is totally disbanded now, the one that we were previously fighting. If we, if we take over Madrid, I assume that our war score is going to get much higher. I like to have a war score of 99 so I can basically demand whatever I want. But, uh, you know, taking over the Spanish capital might not give us uh, 99, but it's going to give us a lot. And with an army this size, you know, you get a lot of advantages due to economy of scale. We're just uh, absolutely... A lot of armies just see us and they're like, fuck that. I'm going home to my wife and kids. Not a bad idea. Anyway, so we're just going to push in here. If the Spanish had just let us conquer Portugal, this wouldn't be a big deal right now. But we're just going to close several of these. They have a 10,000 man force here uh, in this that is ready to be sieged. This is going to be a problem, uh, but we're going to do it anyway because I think it would give us a, a huge diplomatic advantage to own the enemy capital, obviously. We're going to be losing a lot of units at a very rapid pace here, but hopefully they give up. Uh, before, you know, we really start hemorrhaging men. They actually just gained a bunch of men, I think, which seems unusual to me. Please just give up at some point in the near future. Obviously, I mean, this is accurate. You might be thinking 100,000 men versus 10,000. How are you losing this? But, you know, I'm, I'm sieging. That's the... Oh, man. We, we actually lost the battle. We lost 50,000. They lost 1,000. Uh, that's not... Oh, but then we won. Okay. But did we, did we win the, the city? No, we just won a, a brief battle within the city. Now, Madrid still has, uh, if I just click on the city here, like so, like, uh, okay, we have to click on the army, I guess. Madrid still has 4,000 men. You know what, Let, let's fight him out again. I, I have a feeling of this time we're going to succeed, and then we'll sue for peace. I've probably completely uh, handicapped myself in the, the fight against the British. There we go, we've won the Battle of Madrid, and now we own this province. Uh, temporarily, anyway. Now we'll sue for peace. Uh, yeah, but in the fight against the British, this has probably been a very short-sighted fight against the Spanish that has handicapped me a great deal. Let's sue for peace here. 65 war score, sure. Okay, let's demand some tributes. So, I want to extend my... Uh, I guess this would be my southern border. Uh, southwestern, anyway. Uh, so, we're going to definitely want to take Barcelona, which is going to take... Uh, the way this works, we have 65 war score. Each one of these provinces is going to have a, a certain value attached to it. We want Barcelona, which contains some surrounding provinces as well, because Barcelona has uh, the naval dominance value in it that we need. What is this one? Girona? We want to take Girona as well, because uh, that connects to Barcelona. I would just love to form, like, a ridge here. San Sebastian would be another good one to take, like so. And there we go. Now we have kind of a... Uh, like, we've actually gained some territory that's contiguous, if you will. And Bilbao and Santander would be nice as well if I could actually get those. Santander's not that expensive. Bilbao's not that expensive. So that's going to take us to 62. Is there anything I can get even cheaper? There's not. So I think, you know, this seems fair. We've got a nice little chunk of Spanish territory here. Let's send this over. Uh, it looks like they're likely to accept the offer, so we'll on pause. There we go. Uh, and now, you know, the territory of France has been extended a little bit into the territory of Spain. Plus, we own one of our actual objectives. Uh, for naval dominance, which is cool. Our naval dominance is still pretty low, 14%. Great Britain is obviously number one. Uh, but, you know, that, that was a, a fairly characteristic gameplay there of uh, March of the Eagles. If you uh, kind of find yourself... Oh, we have another idea. Let's just take this. If you find yourself uh, interested in it, then, you know, you probably would be interested in it. This is not a $50 game. This is going for 20 bucks on Steam right now, which I think is a, a very, very, you know, value-considered price, if that makes sense, or a value added price. I don't even know anything about economics, man. It's a good value proposition. If you're the kind of guy who likes these kind of games, you could probably get, you know, a hundred hours of gameplay for that $20. But keep in mind, this is a very niche game. It's not for everybody. I am glad to finally be getting my toes wet in this genre. And if you're new to the uh, grand strategy genre, even if you don't know anything about the history of this time period, uh, this is, uh, you know, a good opportunity for you to jump in, I think. I have very positive impressions of March of the Eagles so far. I really like how if you wanted to, you could just, you could be like, okay, fuck you guys. I'm going to play as Moldavia. And I'm just, my goal for this game is just not to die. <laughs> I'm going to not be uh, conquered by Russia. I'm going to not be conquered by Austria or the Ottomans. 
I'm just gonna hang out here. If I'm still alive in 1820, then I consider my game a success. That kind of like open-ended, like user-directed goal is something that's really cool to me. But in any case, it's Mars of the Eagles, it's 20 bucks, it's Paradox Grand Strategy, uh, and it's not broken. I really like it so far, uh, and I think it's a good jumping off point for those new to Grand Strategy. I'm gonna stop rambling. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.